thanks for joining us. This is the Signature TV 30 Minutes. I am Oboman Marvelous Chinedu. In the headlines, President Buhari retired service chiefs appoints new ones. Federal government to engage 30,000 graduates as extension workers. National Examination Council, NACO, announces new date for its examination. And now, the details. President Muhammad Buhari has accepted the immediate resignation of the service chiefs and their retirement from service. Those involved are the Chief of Defense Staff, General Abayomil Oloni Shakin, Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tuko Buratai, Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Ebok Ekwe Ibaz, and Chief of the Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar. President Buhari thanked the outgoing service chiefs for what he called their overwhelming achievements in the effort at bringing enduring peace to the country. The President has also announced the new service chiefs. They are Major General Leo Irabo, Chief of Defense Staff, Major General Ai Atahiru, Chief of Army Staff, Rear Admiral A.Z. Gambo, Chief of Naval Staff, and Air Vice Marshal I.O. Amaho, Chief of Air Staff. The President congratulates the new service chiefs and urges them to be loyal and dedicated in the discharge of their responsibilities. As President Muhammad Buhari sacked the service chiefs and appointed new ones on Tuesday, Nigerians have been speaking on the long-awaited changes. Signature TV correspondent Chibre Zobi spoke to some Abuja residents on the development. There is a change. They bring in new ideas, you know, and um, new ideas on how to cover up crimes. I believe that with the new um, appointments of um, the service chiefs. With the new ones coming now, we can see. We, we, we pray, let us pray to, for them, for those that are coming new, so that they too we pick up from where those ones, those that are sacked, were uh, stopped. This, this new people that is going to come in will not repeat what is happening, what happens before. Let it not be that the same cackles again that will also inflate them. Well, it will bring a change if actually they were able to get the right people, the right person to maintain the city. But all we are looking for is a better change. Because with the situation with the country, nobody is safe. Things are not the way they are like before. Everything becomes so changes just overnight. People begin to die like chickens, like animals. Nobody is even care about anyone's lives again. It's good to have a new leadership to see how they are on to continue your own leadership, you understand? Because many problems is too much for this country, especially in security uh, society. So we need different leadership. Not the Federal Capital Territory Administration said on Monday that it demolished an illegal private residential building and a filling station under construction inside the National Assembly complex for security reasons. The director of the Department of Development Control Mukta Galadima, who led the exercise on Monday, told journalists that the land was initially allocated to the developer to construct a commercial filling station. Galadima said the developer decided to unilaterally commence the building of a residential property adjacent to the land he marked for the station without necessary approval. The allocation was reviewed and revoked following a series of complaints from the office of the National Security Advisor on the security implications of siting a filling station inside such a complex. Compensation had already been paid for the revoked land and property built, but no compensation will be paid for the adjoining residential structure. Some youths in the Ido area of Ibadan on Oyo State on Monday arrested 25 armed men who came into the town on a truck. The men who claimed they were going to hunt around a rural area of the state were seen with Dane guns. The suspects were arrested and handed over to the police in the area, but they complained that the youths in Erua stopped them from entering the town. The armed men were said to have been driven to the police headquarters in Eleyele, Ibadan, for investigation. However, the police public relations officer in Oyo State 
Oluwinga Fadeyi, who contacted, said he was not aware of the incident. The Ebonyi State Governor David Umahi on Monday suspended all his political appointees from Efium and Eza Efium communities following a bloody clash that claims cause of lives and led to the destruction of property worth millions of naira on Saturday. The crisis, which escalated in one of the communities and spilled over to another, was as a result of clashes between two factions of National Union of Road Transport Workers in the area. The governor who spoke at the state security council meeting held in a film community on Monday said all the political appointees and stakeholders in the police custody would remain in detention until peace returned to the area. The governor directed the attorney general and commissioner for justice in the state, Cletus Ofoke, to procure court order that for anybody to be released from detention the governor has to authorize it. The federal government is to engage 30,000 graduates to serve as agricultural extension workers who provide strategic support to farmers across the country. The government has also announced on Monday that it had empowered 20 young Nigerian farmers with an initial take-off grant of 30 million, adding that the fund was provided through the Bank of Agriculture. The Executive Secretary, National Agricultural Land Development Authority, Paul Ikone, told journalists in Abuja that the graduates will be trained in agricultural extension services, including the collection of soil samples and how to conduct soil tests. This came as the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Sabo Nanono, in a statement said the 30 million grant to the 20 young farmers would serve as seed capital for the beneficiaries to establish smallholder agribusinesses. The Southwest Governors has banned open grazing in the region. The decision was taken after an exhaustive meeting with the leadership of Mietu Alakatu Breeders Association of Nigeria on Monday. Signature TV correspondent Nasiri Usman went to the streets of Abuja to get the reactions of Nigerians on the ban. It, it should not just be in the southwest, it should be a national policy or a national law that every open grazing should be restricted to ranches and uh, created areas for them to be grazing. The Yorubas find out that uh, the open grazing has been disturbing their there are people and the indigenous of uh, the Yoruba land and they stood up to it. If other regions deem it fit or if, they, if other regions uh, has the same uh, problem that Yorubas are facing, they should stand up too. Not only the Western government alone, it should be a nation because it affects all uh, the nation. Of course it should be a nationwide policy because other countries, civilized places and other, they've actually adopted such things. In order to make our country peaceful, such things should be adopted too, to avoid all this clean of people and innocent, because people are actually using it, that open grace of a thing, to cause many havoc. So it looks like one ethnic group is trying to, let me say, go against the other uh, uh, ethnic group. The Inspector General of Police, Adamu Mohamed, has said that the youths who participated in the NSAS protest wants to join the Nigerian police force. Mohamed, who made the announcement on Monday, said the same youths that had protested against police brutality have shown interest in joining the force. The Inspector General of Police, however, pointed out that officers in the force do not have the required logistics needed to operate. Mohammed also said that when given the necessary logistics, Nigerian police officers will perform even better than their counterparts in advanced countries. The Minister of Youth and Sports Development, Sunday Dari, on Monday said the government would shut down any National Youth Service Corps orientation camp that fails to comply with the COVID-19 safety protocols. 
The minister said this in Abuja at the joint national briefing of the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19. He said it was discovered that over 700 serving core members across the states had tested positive to COVID-19. According to him, the National Youth Service Corps would not endanger the life of any member of the scheme, adding that those already deployed to the states with high rate of infection would be redeployed. The Oyo State Police Command on Tuesday morning confirmed the raising of the residence of an Ibadan based activist and agitator of Oduduwa Republic, Chief Sunday Adeyemo. The police public relations officer Oluwinga Fadei confirmed the incident in Ibadan on Tuesday. Fadei said that in the early hours of Tuesday, Sanyo Police Station received a report that some unidentified hoodlums came to Sunday Adeyemo's house at Soka area of Ibadan in a homer burst, fired sporadically and set his house ablaze. Adeyemo's mini sitting room got burnt in the process, while other properties were yet to be estimated. According to him, investigations had commenced into the incident while the police is on the trail of the hoodlums. The Lagos General Office of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has arrested 16 suspects in the Lekki area of the state for alleged internet fraud. Some of the suspects are Habib Adebayo, Marcus Wisdom, Caleb Ezekiel, Akindoro Henry, Osara Robo Osasere, and Onyelami Olatunji. Others are Pelumu Glory, Emmanuel Timelein, Jafta Akman, Okire Ruwekwe, Onyeka Odika, Uzoma Gideon, Adebayo Oluwatobi, and Israel Ugochuku. A statement by the EFCC head of media and publicity, Wilson Wajerem, disclosed that the suspects were rounded up on January 21 at the Xerox Residence Hotel, Leki, by operatives who had been tracking their activities. The EFCC said the suspect will soon be arraigned in court, adding that investigations had been concluded. Leaders of the communities of oil producing areas on Tuesday called on the federal government to scrap the Niger Delta Development Commission and transfer all its allocations to them for effective management. The president, national executive of the host communities of Nigerian producing oil and gas, High Chief Benjamin Tamara Nebi, stated this while addressing newsmen on the second day of the public hearing on the petroleum industrial bill by the Senate Joint Committee on Petroleum. He said with the reduction of the host community development trust fund from 10% in 2018 to 2% 2 in 2020 petroleum industry bill proposed documents would deny the people the required funds to develop their areas. Tamara Nebi said NDCC should be scrapped so that the allocation given to the commission could be directly paid for. Host comes critical interventions. Following requests by candidates to be given more time to complete the registration process for the 2020 senior school certificate examination, the National Examination Council has fixed new dates for the examination. In a statement by the Head of Information and Public Relations Division, Aziz Sani, the council noted that the examination, which was earlier scheduled to commence on Monday, February 1, 2021, and end on Wednesday, March 3, 2021, will now start on Monday, February 8, 2021, and end on Wednesday, March 10, 2021. The council also informed the set of candidates who meet some papers during the 2020 internal examination due to the NSAS protests in some states to take note of these new dates and report for the examination accordingly at their various examination centers to be designated. And now the stock market reports. Transactions on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange closed blue as all the market indicators recorded increases. The value of shares that exchanged hands rose to 467.886 million from 333.96. 
Similarly, the value of traded shares rose from 2.64 billion naira to 5.565 billion. The all share index also closed in the positive, climbing to 41,584.94 points from 41,088.96 points traded on Monday. The bulls dominated the floor as 32 gainers were recorded against only 19 losers. RLT Brisco Nigeria PLC was the highest gainer, having a 10% gain on its share price. This was an increase from 2 Kobo traded on Monday to 22 Kobo on Tuesday. John Holt PLC led the losers. Its share price fell from 50 Kobo traded on Monday to 45 Kobo at the close of trading on Tuesday. Zeni Bank was the favorite of investors, trading 19.64 million shares in 388 deals. And now on the foreign scene, Italian Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte submitted his resignation on Tuesday to President Sergio Mattarella in a bid to form a new stronger government. Mattarella, who said he would start a round of discussions with party leaders on the way forward on Wednesday afternoon, added that the meeting is expected to last until Thursday. Conte is expected to seek a new mandate for what would be his third consecutive government in three years. But that depends on his ability to expand his parliamentary majority. In sports, Thomas Tuchel is said to be the next high-profile coach to replace Frank Lampard as Chelsea manager several years after his first book with the club about the job. The 47-year-old German will be the 15th change of manager since Russian Roman Abramovich bought the club in 2003. Tuchel follows some noteworthy predecessors in Jose Mourinho and Carlo Ancelotti, who have also fallen foul of Abramovich in the past. Abramovich said it was a very difficult decision for the club, adding that he has an excellent personal relationship with Frank Lampard. Tuchel was sent packing at the end of December, months after guiding Paris Saint-Germain to the Champions League final. Lampard said he was disappointed not to have had the time this season to take the club to the next level. In entertainment, the Nigerian film Omo Ghetto, produced by Funke Akindelo Bello, popularly known as Jennifer, has been declared Nollywood's highest grossing movie of all time. The 2020 comedy film has broken a four-year record formerly held by Kemi Adetiba's film, The Wedding Party. In a statement released by the Cinema Exhibitors Association of Nigeria, Omo Ghetto has so far grossed 468 million and 36,300 naira. Akin de Lebelo's latest feat is probably the most shocking news in recent times, as it comes amidst the coronavirus pandemic that has crippled the film industry for months. Before we end the news, a recap of the headlines. President Buhari retires service chiefs, appoints new ones. Federal government to engage 30,000 graduates as extension workers. The National Examination Council, NACO, announces new date for its examination. The second wave of COVID-19 is projected to go up at this time of the year. Please do well to stay safe, maintain physical and social distance, and wear your face masks whilst going about your daily activities. That's the Signature TV 30 Minutes. On behalf of my producer, Damilola Abudu, I am Obomano Marvelous Chinidu. Thanks for watching.